So let's look at it that way. And what I found is I, I went to the dictionary to find the definition of the word attitude. It's a great book, the dictionary, many of you have read it. It's a little wordy, but you know. Okay. Didn't say I was funny, just said I could be here today. Okay. The, the, the English language has a lot of words that mean more than one thing. In this case, there are two polar opposite definitions of the word attitude. Two totally opposite definitions. Attitude, definition number one. Attitude is a conscious and selective judgment to behave in a certain way. It's a conscious and selective judgment. I decide to feel or behave in a certain way. A good, good word for that is the word choice. Attitude is a choice. I was fortunate in the 1970s, that was back in the last century, to live in the city of Denver in Colorado and actually got to go into the mountains in a place called Red Rocks Park in Denver and see a singer named John Denver perform his music with the Denver Symphony Orchestra. Many of you remember John Denver. Saying Country Roads, Rocky Mountain High, and then he had that song called Sunshine. Sunshine on my shoulders makes me happy. He was wrong. <laughs> Sunshine does not make you happy. Sunshine's purpose is to light and heat the earth. <coughs> What or who makes you happy? You. You choose to be happy, don't you? If it were raining today, could you still be happy? Yes, yes. yes then it's not sunshine. I will grant you it's probably easier in most cases to be happy when it's sunny. And the sunshine's 300 days a year in Colorado, so John was happy when he wrote that song. But, <laughs> but it doesn't matter about the external influence, and, and I, think, I think it was one of our two speakers this morning said that already, said it's, it's not what is, it's our response to it. It's how we choose to behave. So when I'm driving down the road, you know, I'm driving down the highway, and somebody cuts me off and I get angry with them, I just gave up control of my emotions to that person. In fact, I was just hijacked and emotional, okay? Because now I'm bad for something they did, okay? They're in charge of my emotions. I, I, an emotionally aware person understands it's not the circumstances, I get to choose my behavior. I get to choose my feelings. Now, the second definition, the direct opposite, attitude provides the mental excuse to explain or justify our behavior. So what happens is we rationalize or we use other events as an excuse for feeling bad. That's called blame. It's not my fault, it's the governor's fault. It's, it's, the, it's the, uh, the traffic, it's the weather, it's Dr. Maldonado, it's the board, it's my boss, okay? Uh, we blame other things, it's the price it gets. Okay? We start blaming other things for our circumstances or for how we feel about them. Okay? And now what happens with this is we go through life and we start saying things like, you made me so mad when you did that. Okay? Now, he may have done something really stupid, but did he make me mad? No. Who, who made me mad? I chose to get mad. Dietrich, you, you hurt my feelings when you said that. It really hurt me. Now, Deidre may have said something cruel, hard to believe, but she may have, okay? But did she hurt my feelings? Who hurt my feelings? I chose to let my feelings be hurt. If he, could, if he could make me mad, if she could hurt my feelings, who would be in control of my life? They would. That's not how it works, okay? And people always do and say dumb things. We get to choose our response. People who accept this second definition here of, of attitude don't stop them. They're so stuck on their definition, they have to go further. So they go, stop it. Stop making me mad. Stop hurting my feelings. How successful are you in getting people to change those behaviors? By the way, if I could stop him from making me mad, stop her from hurting my feelings, or doing those same or doing those other things, who'd be in control of their lives? I would. That's not how it works. They have to make their own decisions. Okay? Now, so then they take it to the next step. And they're stuck on that second definition, so they go to the next step. Get rid of them. I'm getting out of my life, okay? I'm gonna transfer them, fire them, or you know what? I'm just at it with this place. I'm so tired of these people making me mad, so tired of these people hurting my feelings. I'm going over there, because over there it's different. And guess what happens when they get over there? The same people, same problems, right? There are always people who do and say the wrong things. There are always people who even purposely try to hurt your feelings. Your feelings can only be hurt if you allow them to be. It's your choice. By the way, I'm not saying that when he does or says something stupid, he's not accountable for it. Of course, he's accountable. There's always accountability and responsibility. 
And, and, and there are people who, who we work for, or people who work for us, who, who lay out the boundaries of accountability. But understand that as regards to attitudes, as regards to my feeling toward that, it's my choice to be hurt, it's my choice to be offended, it's my choice to be angry or not. And when you keep doing things the same way, you get the same results. The, the Dr. Stephen Covey, the book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, the three most important words I think in that book are this. The best, best words you can learn, keep teaching other people. I am responsible. I'm responsible for what I say and do. I'm responsible for how I react to other people. Now, I'll